session meeting for September the 9th, 2020. I hope all are, are doing well. Um, I'm commenting to Council Member uh, Brady that uh, we finished our city council meeting last night at 11 o'clock. Um, it was a marathon meeting. Um, my committee meetings began at 1, and so um, I was 10 hours in my office chair. That's why you see me home today. I've um, got some work done in my office and had a doctor's appointment and came straight from there to, to the house. Thought I'd give myself a little bit of a break. Um, I don't remember see, receiving minutes. Did we receive minutes, Mr. Um, Mr. Eric? Uh, yes, sir. It should have been on your uh, previous. Um, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and share this. Uh, it should have been on your uh, uh, agenda notification email that I had sent out um, about a week ago, I think now. Uh, they were the July meeting minutes. Okay. All right. So have y'all had an opportunity to review the minutes um, from July? Uh, July? Um, if so, we'll take a motion to approve. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. All right. Um, we're going to jump right into Eric. Is going All to give right. us an update on West Ashley business highlights. So, Mr. Eric, you are. Yes, sir. Uh, All right. So, first, uh, I'm just going to, uh, uh, for any uh, new viewers to the uh, Zoom version of West Ashley Revitalization Commission, I was just going to do a quick uh, overview here. Um, commission, uh, commission consists of the uh, individuals that you see on your screen here. Uh, in addition, we have several presenters who are on it. Uh, the, uh, if, if you are a public member, you are able to watch but not uh, verbally participate until we have unlocked you. Uh, if you do wish to uh, participate for the public comment period, uh, please go ahead and you'll see a question and answer button on your screen somewhere. Uh, and um, you can put your name in for that and we can uh, either read it out loud for you or have you uh, unmute yourself and, and uh, read it out then. Uh, for the protocol, I'm going to introduce the agenda item and the presenters. Presentations will be given by the speakers. Uh, questions from the public may be submitted, as I previously said, at the Q&A. Um, and then uh, feel free to email myself or visit charleston-sc.gov slash work for any additional information. And as a reminder, the pro these proceedings are being recorded. Uh, one moment, please. So uh, Ms. Ms. Krawcheck will be calling in on her, her phone in a moment or two here. Okay. All right, so. Tonight's agenda is uh, we've already done the meeting minutes. Uh, next is going to be West Ashley Business Highlights presented by myself. Epic Center Update, which will be a uh, discussion element, a for information element from Harbor Entrepreneur Center, as well as uh, we have uh, Ms. Davis from Trademark, uh, the owners of uh, Epic Center slash Citadel Mall. Uh, we will also be having a, a short presentation from our uh, community development staff uh, with the city regarding some affordable housing initiatives. And um, wrapping it up will be a city plan listening session overview done by myself again. Okay, so you could take the first item, I believe, on the West Ashley business highlights? Yes, sir. So for the West Ashley business highlights, what I wanted to do is really just kind of give you guys an idea of what's been occurring due to our uh, very unusual year uh, with coronavirus. I want to give you guys an idea of what uh, has been occurring throughout the city since January of 2020. Uh, and so this is just a very high level um, overview of uh, some, uh, the, the blue dots are new business licenses that we have received uh, for, um, for, the Air, for West, West Ashley only. And then the yellow chevrons you see here are uh, some large scale shovel ready projects uh, from our technical review commit, committee, yes. Um, with the technical review committee, let's see where is it? One 
moment. I think it's See if this is it. I thought I okay. So that's the map. Sorry, I thought I had everything pulled up here. Um, here we go. All right. So uh, on the map, you see there have been fourteen large-scale projects that have been reviewed and approved through our. City's Technical Review Committee. It's a staff level reviewing body. So that means that there is no, um, that's, that's not the element where there is public input available. Uh, that is uh, uh, different um, inside the city uh, uh, staff review. So stormwater review, transportation, uh, zoning review, things of that nature to make sure the city's ordinances are being followed. Some notable locations are the Harris Teeter Shopping Center, which is out in uh, West Ashley. Uh, you'll see that that one has, sorry, trying to divide up my screen here. Um, where'd you go? There you are. West Ashley Teeter Shop, the West Ashley Harris Teeter Shopping Center and Gas Station. Uh, that had a two additional out parcels approved for it this year. Uh, they are currently under construction. I was out there last month and the framing was just about done. So they should be cladding the exterior by now. In addition to that, they also received approval for a gas station to be, uh, to, for the construction of a gas station to commence out in that area. Uh, over here, uh, we have Brenton, Benton House Phase Two Memory Care Facility. Uh, that's a addition to the existing Benton House Memory Care Facility. We have Bull Creek Apartments located at 1805 Ashley Crossing Lane. That's going to be 64 units, a 64 unit apartment structure for affordable housing, which uh, I believe Ms. Peters will be touching on later during her presentation. Uh, this one's a very um, uh, interesting one that we have going on. It is, we are, we are Sharing Hope SC. They are a, uh, it's going to be their administrative offices and they are a tissue and organ donation nonprofit. And this is gonna be where they're gonna uh, uh, run a lot of their administrative services out of that one. Um, there was a shovel breaking, I believe last week or two weeks ago on it. Um, it's it's gonna be a very beautiful building. And then uh, there's also 519 Savannah Highway down here. That one is an infill office building located in the Ashley Bridge District along Savannah Highway. Uh, and then the other ones that are around the map um, are things such as uh, the Manity Center for Grand Oaks Community. Uh, there's also the Grand Oaks Phases 8, 9B, and 11, which are approximately 155 lots, so that you're going to see those up in this area for Grand Oaks. C.E. Williams, middle school revision for the additional five trailers that they need. Uh, there's also crossing at Verdier subdivision. That's 42 different uh, single family homes coming in and Coastal Community Church down here uh, was also um, uh, approved this year. In addition to that, these blue dots uh, represent new commercial business license, business licenses that were issued since January of 2020. There were 107 that were issued 87 of those are for non-food beverage establishments. 21 of those were for, were for food and beverage establishments. In addition, not shown on this map, uh, there are 146 home occupation licenses also issued, and that's all just for West Ashley. So I just wanted to, um, that's, that's the business highlights. Um, uh, so, so Eric, the... Those, those numbers that you gave us are for city business licenses? That Correct. Not That's, that is just for city business license and city TRC. Uh, that does not include anything in the county. Um, I, I was um, pressed for time in gathering the information for, for yeah. it, so I just went with uh, what I had at my fingertips. I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if Council Member uh, Moody could help us with collecting the additional information on county business license and equivalent of their TRC. I don't, I don't know if they do have a TRC. Councilman Moody? Uh, we can, I, can, I can acquire. I don't have that information tonight. 
Okay. But is there a equivalent uh, county TRC? Yeah. Um, so if there's a, a big project coming through, we may be able to get that information to supplement this. We would. Okay. Um, I mean, uh, Joel Evans is, is probably the go-to guy of the county. That's who, I, that's who I call for all that stuff. So um, I can reach out to him. Okay. I'd just like to see how those numbers would supplement the ones that Eric just gave us. That's, that's a pretty good barometer as to what's happening in, in West Ashley. Mm -hmm. um, does any commission members have a question for Eric about these numbers or any other further inquiry? And if we can, we can probably email you the, uh, any more information we can get from the county to sort of see how that pairs to the city as well. Okay. All right. All right. So with that, we'll be uh, moving along to agenda item number four, which is Epic Center Update. And for that, uh, we have Trey from Harbor Entre Entrepreneur Center, as well as uh, once I promote them, uh, Mr. Osborne. There he is. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, this is um, actually John Osborne, the co-founder of the Harbor Entrepreneur Center. Um, thank you so much for the time and the opportunity to share what we have cooking over at uh, Citadel Mall Epic Center. You know, for those on the call that don't know the Harbor, um, we're a nonprofit organization started 2013 by myself and Patrick Bryant. And our mission is to create collision among the entrepreneur community. And we've been doing that through a number of programs throughout the, the last several years. Most notably, we started our accelerator program, which really was a new support offering for the entrepreneur ecosystem back in 2013, 14. Um, we've run 12 accelerator programs, over 100 companies through it. Um, several million dollars of seed money has been invested in the, the graduates. Um, so from a space perspective, the ability to um, come and occupy now 6,500 square feet in Citadel Mall and Epic Center is another incredible asset for the community. You heard the north of 140, you know, home-based businesses in West Ashley that are there. The, the harbor can be a place for those entrepreneurs to convene, collect, connect, collide is our mission. Um, and take advantage of some of the, the programmatic offerings. So, you know, we, we are incredibly, you know, many of you know that I served on the commission in this first couple of years and uh, appreciate that opportunity, you know, got to know Richard and Ginger and see the vision for what they have and always thought that it's an incredible vision and asset uh, in our entire community, let alone, you know, within the city of Charleston. So couldn't be more excited to have the Harbor occupying a space in there and, and bringing our programs, you know, one program of note that um, maybe some of you don't know, the Harbor also owns and operates the JRS coding school. So software development school um, that can bring people the skill sets needed to either get an entry level job at, at tech companies in our community like Blackbot and Benefit Focus or, um, or take that skill and start their own company and their own software um, app or, or web development company. So um, we anticipate offering the, the school out of there, Accelerator out of there and co-working out of there. So really excited to, to bring you this update. Um, with that, I, I can make my remarks brief, but excited to to be having a logo and, a, and an opportunity for the Harvard Operate in West Ashley, which I've always seen a vision and opportunity for. Oh, it's good to see you again, and uh, thank you for your service on the commission. We do miss you, but I think you've uh, picked up another mission. So, <laughs> Indeed. Um, so, John, I, I've uh, been asked about this, and I've described it as uh, an incubator or businesses, is that an accurate description? Yeah, incubator is, there's nuances of terminology amongst this innovation sector world. Um, accelerator program is, is very accurate because we do have that 12 week 
programmatic offering, you know, incubators um, based on who is describing it um, implies that there's physical space plus some programmatic support, which inherently we do have. But, but really, we offer the accelerator program, the co-working space, the JRS program, our forum program. So we, we very much think about it in terms of our programmatic offerings of how an entrepreneur takes advantage of, of those various programs based on their stage and type of business. Very good. I see Ginger and, and Richard are with us. Glad to have you all there. Ginger's always smiling and happy, and <laughs> which is thank you all always for y'all's innovative work at the Epic Center. Um, and so, what, what space is this occupying? Um, is it within the campus of, of the mall? Yeah. Um, thanks for having us here. It's actually right across from the MUSC um, entry into the mall. And that's kind of the first area that we really plan to, to retenant and reposition. And this use um, is something that we've been talking to John about back, I think when Plan West Ashley was going on. So we're, yes. we're thrilled to be able to have them come be a part of, of that um, vision becoming a reality. Wonderful. Um, I, I see you have trade uh, uh, from Harbor, uh, I see have any comments or anything he wants to add, John? I don't know if Trey is on the line or if I am serving as Trey's proxy. <laughs> You're uh, doing great, John. Keep going. Uh, <laughs> sure. Well, there's any other, I, Mayor Tegelberg, thanks for joining us. We, uh, I was just mentioning to the commission that we had a marathon council meeting last night and we're all a little groggy from, from that. Um, so does any other commissioners have a question or comment from for, uh, John or Richard or, or Ginger or, or Trey who's joined uh, us as well? As to what this program, what, what is out there, um, what it seems, to, what this mission is and what it seems to accomplish. Um, I, I'm, the, I'm excited about it. It's, 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 this is a great plug for Wes Ashley to have an accelerator a business program out there um, to highlight West Ashley, that this is a you know, the center of commerce and the center of progress um, in uh, in this very vital location for our economic development. Um, so uh, this is just, I think, John, uh, your vision on this is really incredible, and um, trying to think out, thinking outside the box is how this is going to improve our our community. Well, I, I have to say it's it's not just my vision that really Richard and Ginger, you know, making and seeing what this can do and having a larger vision for what that asset that they are creating there is, is, is purely not just my vision. You know, it's a shared vision that um, we're aligned on. So I, you, you got to give them a lot of credit for it too. It's a community oh, vision. We are happy to have you. Very happy. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, Council Member uh, Brady, I can't see you. I didn't know if I was cutting you off, but I certainly want to make sure you have an opportunity to add anything or chat about. Nope. Nope. I'm good. All right. Good. <laughs> All right, any other any other comments or questions from commissioners? Um, and we will clip right through this uh, this meeting. If, uh, just, I'm not obje I'm not objecting. Trust me. So. <laughs> All right. Um, then. Uh, with that, we'll move into the uh, West Ashley Affordable Housing in Initiatives. All right. Well, hey, so can I start that one out? <laughs> I want to start that one with us. Don't, don't go anywhere. I, I, I want to know if Florence and Diana have made my trophy yet. They're going to give me for. They thought they got to twist my arm to do affordable housing. They thought they got to fight me. And you know, you want to give me a hug, Florence. I see a smile. Anyway, I just want to remind everybody. Don't let COVID forget, we're gonna do incredible things together. So anyway, thank you guys. All right. Florence, I think that was an intro. Yeah, definitely. The floor is yours. Uh, <laughs> Eric, I, am I up? You are up. You are up and ready. You're up and ready. I think my role here tonight, good evening everyone, was to give an update on the uh, Maryville uh, development that the city did. 
And so uh, before we got to developing those seven houses, the city was already in Maryville for several years. We did a survey of the area, looking at all the vacant land and properties that were available. And in 2015, we built our first new construction affordable housing uh, through a nonprofit, the Pastors Organization. Um, following that, we purchased uh, three parcels of land, uh, one on Sycamore, well, it used to be Hillsborough, the address, uh, one on Many Street, and one on Fifth Avenue. Um, those lots were subdivided. And so we were able to build seven houses, two on Hillsboro, three on Mini, and two on Fifth Avenue. And through a competitive bid, we secured Meadows Construction to do the architectural services and board and management uh, to do the building. Um, specifically, the city was building for uh, people earning no more than 80% of the area median income, because previous to that, um, we were targeting folks at 120, but the need for 80 percenters was so great. So all those houses were targeted to people at 80% of the area median income. Um, the acquisition was done with federal funds, home funds, but the construction was financed by the fee in lieu fund that we, we currently have. And as a total cost, acquisition and development cost us $348,000. The construction was $1.3 million. The total project cost was $1,648,687. And Eric, I can send you this so you can pass it out to the commissioners at some point if that becomes necessary. All right, that sounds great. Um, but the city did net $955,000 plus from, from the sale of the program when all the sales were done and the subsidy were left. We left 50,000 in subsidy for each homeowner to make it more affordable. Uh, so we netted almost a million dollars when everything was done. Um, in terms of who and how it was sold, we, um, went through uh, West Ashley at the time to the various churches and the community. We gave out applications hoping to give the residents the first preference or people who wanted to move back there because their family lived there. We gave them the first preference. Um, eventually, we sold the houses to uh, two city employees, purchased two uh, Maryville residents, and then we had two other residents from West Ashley neighborhood uh, that purchased. We still have one available. And the only reason we have it available is because the person purchasing had uh, some uh, catastrophic things happen in their family and they had to pull out. And the, de the demographics were five African-Americans and one Caucasian. We are currently looking at uh, we bought, we acquired a property on Juniper Street in the Ardmore Sherwood neighborhood. We plan to put 11 townhomes there. The new ordinance that just passed allowed us to get the density. So we're going to be moving forward with the um, design. Uh, for that, we expect to have uh, Eddie Bellow's uh, company, which is Bellow and Pusden Architects. They will begin the design of two bedrooms, two baths townhomes. The construction will begin in 2020, 2021, and we also expect to finish the project in 2021, all things considered. Um, Bulls Creek, which was mentioned previously, uh, that's a 64 apartment uh, building for families earning 60% or below of the area median income. It was financed by the city's bond, part of the bond um, funds that were approved. Uh, we expect construction to begin by the end of the year and completion in 2021. Uh, we, there's another one that we wanted to mention, 
which is Orleans Gardens. It's owned by Atlantic Housing and it's going to be renamed or it's already been renamed Water's Edge. And they are renovating every unit. And the city of Charleston invested $500,000 in that project. And we expect it to be finished. Um, well, we thought by this year, hopefully by the end of this year, um, but those apartments will be for people earning no more than 50% of the area median income. Uh, we are still looking at acquisition in the West Ashley neighborhood. Uh, one of the things we find that when we started to get properties there, we could get a lot for 40,000, 30, 40,000. Now it's almost doubled. Um, and so every time we see a lot, we have to think, can we make it affordable? If we bought one lot, how many units could we get there to keep it affordable? So that's the challenge we're facing but we're definitely looking at doing some more as the opportunity presents itself. I believe um, the peer point, I believe Mr. Johnson is gonna address that one. Before we turn it over to Mr. Johnson, the um, Orleans Garden to the new water edge, how many units will be, will be there? Um, well, those already are in existence right They're, now. Yeah. Oh, so we're just renovating those existing units here. Okay. And those right. are we're not adding anything. We're just totally renovating the buildings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. <clears throat> Mr. Johnson, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission and the listening public. I appreciate the opportunity to speak on behalf of the Charleston Redevelopment Corporation. Uh, as I just want to give a couple seconds of context from an affordable housing standpoint. The CRC, which we say for short for the Charleston Redevelopment Corporation, primary um, uh, partners, if you will, between both the city of Charleston, the Charleston Housing Authority, and Historic Charleston, uh, really is focusing between 75% and 120% of median income. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with it, with it as a 501c3 affordable housing provider. And also the uh, one component of the CRC is the Palmetto Land Trust. Uh, the land trust looking to keep those units that are developed um, permanently affordable uh, by transferring on, on ownership projects, the uh, structures, but maintaining ownership of the or control of the dirt on the long term so that those properties can remain affordable. Uh, specifically as it relates to tonight's conversation, um, uh, Ms. Peters referenced the Pierpoint townhomes. Uh, so we are um, working in partnership with um, Homes of Hope, who is actually the developer of that project, 75 townhomes. Those will be incorporated or are incorporated as a part of the land trust. So those will remain affordable for the long term. Again, targeting those at 75% uh, and to 120% of the area median income. Um, primarily two and three bedroom units. Uh, one other project I will mention as it relates to the CRC in the West Ashley community is uh, the corner of um, Battery Avenue and 5th, uh, 963 Battery Avenue. We were in the process of preparing that site to move the historic home to that location, which again will be sold for a home ownership project under the land trust model. Um, as, as just as the city is also looking at other opportunities in, in the neighborhood, uh, the CRC is as well. So the expectation is that we will continue to, to do some other affordable housing projects in the area, but uh, certainly want to discuss those two uh, projects and initiatives that are currently underway. Very good. Um, it, is there one department or one agency that sort of keeps a running total of the inventory of affordable housing um, throughout the West Ashley area, is, is that accessible? We do in um, HCD, we keep a uh, running total and also Chloe in planning, in the planning department, she's actively working on that to make sure that our numbers are always on point. So is, is there a, um, a matrix in which uh, we look at the demographics of a particular area and, and think, Okay, for a population of this size, 
or the, the demographics of, of this certain particular region, we should have X number of units for affordable housing with, within those two matrices that either you mentioned, Ms. Ms. Peters, or, or you did, Mr. Johnson, as to based on the income level and based on the, uh, the demographics, we should have X number of, of units available. Is, is, that, is there some kind of matrix or scale that we look for? Uh, there is. Um, planning has some um, standards that we use, but also the chamber, I think a couple of years ago, had put out a projection of how many housing units would be needed in the area. And we use that data to, in this, to determine how the city could contribute to that number both in terms of uh, affordable housing for home ownership and rental. So we put all of those into a matrix and that's on, on the strategy for go going forward for what we support in terms of rental and what we do in terms of home ownership was based on, the, on, on some of that data. I think that affordable housing is just uh, one of the most critical um, elements and factors and issues that we need to be tackling on a, on a regular basis, um, maintaining our citizens um, in our community um, is such an important part of, of our development and our mission as a, as a city. Um, we can't run people out of the community. I mean, that's, and that's an issue I think that uh, we're facing on a regular basis. Uh, we'll be, as we become more prosperous as a community, that's and housing goes up, and the cost of living goes up. Um, not having better transportation and, and other uh, living uh, amenities creates a, a whole different uh, component and other issues for our, our community. And, and um, before I turn it over to the other commissioners, I ask for questions. And, uh, Ginger and, and Richard, we part of our pod for. Uh, the Epic Center includes uh, a certain number of units for, uh, I just don't remember, is it workforce housing or is it affordable housing as well? All, I think all levels, I believe, is what we um, we ended up with. I think Correct. we included the 60% AMI yeah. as well. So, which is very, very important as they're going through their process of the redevelopment in that area of, of West Ashley. What we see from Mr. Johnson and Ms. Peters, how all this sort of ties into together in Orleans, well, we can start calling it Water Edge, I guess. Um, Ms. Peters, yeah. right on the right on the fringe of, of the Citadel Mall, um, old Citadel Mall, of the Epic Center. This is really exciting stuff to, to see. So, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I could thank you. I, I was about to break in. Also, just to add that in our new city plan, our new comprehensive plan, this is Christopher Morgan from the planning division speaking here. Yes, sir. Um, we are I recognize doing, your voice loud and clear. <laughs> we're going to be doing the deepest dive we've ever done into housing data, uh, trying to get a real sense of what the housing market is doing in our region, in our city, um, <laughs> both from a rental standpoint and a, a, a purchase standpoint. And we hope to have in that document recommendations that say, you know, in West Ashley, you know, to really need, we're going to need X number of units of this type and X number of, you know, uh, first time home buyer units of this type. So we hope to have a, a, a element like that in our plan. Our, we have a consultant working on that community data platforms who does really uh, first rate stuff. And I think everybody's going to be very impressed with what they see coming out of that. Of course, it will also show us that our task is, I think, <laughs> going to be a challenge but it's one that we need to, to undertake. <clears throat> Very good. Um, I see that Mary Peters has joined us. Um, so commissioners, anybody have a question for either um, Mr. Johnson or Ms. Peters or Mr. Morgan or Davis's? I see. Uh, to, to answer one of your previous questions, it's gonna be 100 units rehabbed at Orleans Gardens or Water's Edge. I see council member Waring has, has joined us. And I also believe that council member Ross Appel has joined us as well. Um, welcome both of y'all um, on here. Uh, we're, we're just talking about uh, council member wearing um, the number of units coming on uh, with affordable housing in West Ashley. Um, and we're just getting an update from Mr. Johnson and Ms. Peters. I see. Uh, 
the Orleans uh, Gardens being renamed Water's Edge. Um, so any of the comments, questions? Uh, I have a question. I have a comment. Okay, yeah, yeah Ms. Hamilton. Okay. Um, this concerns Water's Edge. I have not heard from any of the residents of the apartments, but I have heard from a few individuals who live in Orleans Woods, and they are concerned about the possibility of what they are viewing, what's happening at Water's Edge as a possible way of replacing the current occupants um, with a new group of individuals coming in. Um, I don't know how to put their fears to rest, but this is definitely a concern and they talk about that. Um, you mentioned that the uh, requirement will be for 50% of AMI and that's a good point that um, to mention. And the current occupants, they are able to go back into their apartments. Is that not correct? They will all be able to go back into the apartment. It's being renovated in such a way that no one will be displaced. Um, okay. If there's any concerns, they can call our office and we can get in touch with management. I think we've had a few meetings over there where the uh, Atlantic Housing came out and spoke to the residents. Um, the financing, um, the renovation, you know, that's not what Atlantic Housing does. They maintain affordable housing. That's what they do all day, every day. Um, no one will be displaced, but if there's a concern and they would like to have uh, a representative from Atlantic Housing come out and talk to them, you can uh, just send me a notice, uh, Gianna, I or um, Andrea will arrange it, um, but no one is going to get displaced. And I Thank think- Thank you for clarifying that, um, Ms. Peters. This is Demet Jenkins. I was gonna ask that very question because I had heard some of the same things as well, uh, Diane, that people were thinking that they were gonna be asked to leave. So thank you for clarifying that. And it sounds like maybe another meeting is necessary since some people are still thinking that they're going to be put out for some reason. So maybe it's something we do need to coordinate to assure them that that's not gonna happen. Absolutely. Ms. Hamilton, you can shoot me an email reminder. Okay. Uh, Gianna and I will make sure, and, or, or Andrea, one of us, will make sure that it's addressed. Um, in addition to, um, I, I think what's happening also with the persons who live in Orleans Woods, um, they are being inundated just like I am in the Maryville Asheville area with requests to purchase our homes. And they are trying to find some way to process all of this. And they are trying to look to the future. Uh, they are maybe developers um, because of what's happening or what is in the process of happening at Epic Center that will um, cause them to be replaced in the near future. So that's been a concern I have been hearing as well. And uh, we understand that, and that is always a concern when something new starts happening in the in a neighborhood. And yes. that's not to say some of that is going to is not going to happen, but it's not something that the city has any control over. Mm -hmm. Now, what we've been telling residents, no matter where you live in the city, if somebody comes and they're bothering you about buying a, you know buying your house, you know we tell them you know call the police tell them don't come back on your property. You know, we give them advice, but the, you know, gentrification or somebody's, you know, choice or being pressured into selling their property, that is not something that we can control. We can guide them and we can, you know, help them through the process. But um, unfortunately, the city, there's not anything that the city could do about that. And I'm sure on some level, because of what's happening at Epic, Epic Center and around, people are going to get, you know, realtors calling them, you know, we want to buy your property, but that's not what Atlantic Housing, that's not coming from Atlantic Housing. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Council Member Waring had a question or comment. Yes, sir. Thank yeah, you for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Chim. Um, uh, uh, Diane and, and uh, Reverend, We've actually seen this before, um, right in uh, St. Andrews, what used to be St. Andrews Garden Apartments. All of those apartments were redone 
and no one was displaced, but we had the same fear that that would happen. Um, what, Ms. Peters, can you help me out? What does that now cause? No longer called St. Andrews. Uh, it's called Palmera. Okay, it's called Palmera. Yeah, and right the city there. does have a $500,000 investment in there also. That's right. So this is tracks along the similar guidelines. Those apartments used to have a bunch of window units. All of them now have much more amenities along with central um, heating and air. And you're going to see those type improvements here. And the nonprofit that came in to do this is a very strong uh, nonprofit from a financial basis. As a matter of fact, they almost got disqualified for city funding because their financial uh, sheets, uh, balance sheets and income statements were so strong. Uh, and the thinking was, wow, we need to include this company so they can tell other nonprofits how to build their balance sheets and income statements. So, and, and Ms. Peters is right, this is their business, uh, low to moderate income housing. So there's no transition gonna be taken here or displacement of people, but that fear is there. And when we met, and one of the things that we need to do in all these woods and around the areas, they used to have a very active homeowners association. Well, as the people grew older and, you know, death made alterations, that homeowners association dissipated. They really need to, uh, I've tried to encourage them to uh, form another homeowners association with some of the younger people standing, you know, coming and taking, taking leadership roles because that's how rumors really get answered. Uh, they say, you know, in our community, we have that, 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 an axiom, they say this is happening. They say that's going to happen. It's not fact-based, but the homeowners associations all across this city is a tremendous funnel for accurate information, and that's what we need over. So whatever help you can be to that, or I can be the help to try to get, I've certainly tried, um, but we need to get that done. There's, they say, you know, Epic Center is going to do this. One of the strengths of All Ends Woods in that particular area, everybody virtually owns their property. No one can make you sell. And I've actually shared that at community meetings. Uh, I don't, uh, Ms. Peters, I don't know if you were there. Maybe Ms. Shaw Johnson was there uh, yeah. when we had a meeting there. You know, we had, it, was, it was a prideful thing. People have been there 35 years, 40 years. One lady, I think, I think it was uh, 45 years or 46 years as an owner. It's very difficult to get gentrified when you own deed and title to your property. So. And that type of confidence needs to be shared with them. They are stakeholders who have a say in what can happen. So what we see is going to happen at, at All Ends Woods uh, renovations is what we've already seen that have taken place at what is all um, St. Andrew's Garden Apartments. And that has been very successful that the city played a major role in that and just want to be successful as well. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. And, and to echo um, Councilman Owen, you're absolutely right about the, the strength of neighborhood associations. They're organized, they have a voice. It's, we can communicate with them more directly. And I wish we had more of those around in West Ashley. It's a very strong presence, but uh, your point is well taken about that. And whatever the city can do to help rejuvenate that neighborhood association would be a big help, I think, to folks. Um, very true. You know, and the other thing, and Ms. Hamilton was very helpful a couple of years ago when the County Bar Association did a clinic for wills. Um, and uh, one of the saddest things is happening is that people who've been in homes for uh, generations and decades, they don't leave a will. And uh, so there's some confusion when they die, how that land is passed on to their intended loved ones and to their family. Um, that creates a, a problem with succession. And it's just such a simple thing to do, to have a very simple will to say, I'm leaving the house to my son and daughter in equal shares or whatever. But probably this, it may be a good idea to be rethinking, uh, having another one of those clinics for other parts of West actually as well. Um, Ms. Peters and Ms. Hamilton, I'm looking at y'all and Riven Jenkins, that we can do that, we can organize that. And that's just a very simple, easy thing to do to get those wills knocked out in, in short order have that done. Um, thank you all for the, for the comments. Anybody else, questions, comments, concerns? Uh, very good discussion about affordable housing. In, in West. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Peters. Taking care of my mother-in-law, Ms. Mary? I'm telling you, I deliver her paper to her door every morning. 
Very good. Um, who owns the Orleans Garden Apartments? Atlantic Housing Foundation. Atlantic Housing, okay. And where are the new apartments gonna be built? I'm sorry, did you ask where are they going to be built? Yes, ma'am. It's already built. No, the, uh, uh, the affordable housing units. They're already built and people are already occupying them. It's just gonna be a substantial rehabilitation of the buildings. I see, I see. Oh, I have a picture of them right here. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else, any comments, questions, concerns? Thank you. That's, that's great. All right. Ms. Jackrell. Thank you, guys. Ms. Peters, I don't know if I caught all the math on the Maryville units that were constructed. It sounded like the city may have recouped all but about $170,000 on that project. Does that add up? Uh, no. Okay. Um, the math only adds up if you count the $348,000 or that we left as subsidy. So we have all the expenses and then when we sell, we leave a portion, which is in this particular case, we left $50,000 as down payment assistance for the home buyer. So that's not money that, you know, that's money that could have come back to the city in addition to the $955,000. So we, you know, that's not, it's counted separately on the city's balance sheet, but okay. in terms of what came back to us in cash, it's $955,555. The subsidy remains in the homes permanently and it, it benefits the next buyer. So we don't always have to come up with a source of funding to fund a home buyer every time the house sells. It's permanent subsidy. And how long are those restricted by deed? 90 years. Okay, and we did how many units there? I'm sorry? How many units was it at Maryville? Seven. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. And, um, uh, Ms. Peters, Mr. Johnson, I believe that's going to be similar to how the Pierpoint townhomes as well as the um, Ardmore Sherwood community townhomes are going to be, correct? Yeah, well, the Pierpoint ones are going to go into the land trust. Um, if Mr. Johnson is on and don't mind me talking, um, the, the land trust is a separate, um, what I should say, model for affordable housing. The, the land trust will own the land and the homeowner, the, the structure. Um, but with the home ownership initiative and the, the 90 year restrictive covenants, the homeowner owns everything, but the city dictates for 90 years who can live there and how much it can be sold for. Okay. All right, Any other you. comments, questions? Very good discussion. Appreciate all the input and questions and look forward to see how this um, would pan out. Mayor, um, any, any uh, parting comments before we go into public comment itself for the general population? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I've got to leave in just a couple of minutes. I wanted to share a couple of things from last night, uh, Mr. Chairman, if, if you didn't uh, give a rundown on a few things that Yes, sir. In fact, did West Ashley from our city council meeting. Uh, one, I, I, I'd just like to share that we honored a uh, longtime West Ashley resident judge Richard Fields by naming one of our municipal courtrooms after um, after the judge. He, he recently turned 100 years old as a remarkable mm -hmm. man and a West Ashley resident. So I, I, I thought I would share that good news with y'all. Um, Secondly, the city applied through the Economic Development Administration for um, approximately just shy of a million dollars of funding for a revolving loan fund for small businesses. 
and we worked out an arrangement with the uh, LDC, the Local Development Corporation, uh, to help process uh, uh, those loans. So if, if you know of a small West Ashley business that's struggling from uh, everything that's been going on this year, uh, we do have some low interest loans uh, that will be available through, uh, through the LDC. Um, thirdly, I wanted to let everyone know as we continue, um, this came through Council uh, Member Waring's committee uh, yesterday. Uh, we approved a uh, professional services contract with Thomas and Hutton to do the preliminary design engineering for uh, uh, stormwater improvements in the Windermere uh, neighborhood of West Ashley, which I thought was um, a long time coming. And, and then lastly, on affordable housing, and, and I don't know uh, that this word will get out very far and wide, so I just thought I would mention it. City Council uh, last night also gave final approval to an ordinance that allows um, homeowners uh, with single family zoning to legally build an accessory dwelling unit in their backyard or on their property. And um, this is for uh, family members use, or if you will dedicate uh, the unit to be rented to, to someone that meets Florence's uh, requirements as an affordable uh, unit. This was not possible in the city before. It was, I believe, in the county, but not in the city. So um, uh, homeowners who, who would like to enhance their property, either for their own family or for affordable rental, uh, will be able to legally build an accessory uh, dwelling unit on, on their property. So that's that was news. And then um, the last thing, and I guess I'm preaching to the choir, but I'm just, it's September and it's the last month for people to sign up for the census. If you hadn't gotten counted in West Ashley, we need you to spread the word to everybody get counted. So we, uh, that makes a difference for us in the long run. But thank and you I, for giving me a minute. And I, think, I, I, I think, Mr. Mayor, we're, the state of South Carolina's got the, one of the lowest rates of return, doesn't it? I read an article about uh, the census. So we really, you know, the, the census means such an important component across the board for everything government-wise. It's just an incredible um, responsibility. Back in uh, 1980, uh, when I was still in law school, I was a census taker. I still got my little satchel box, and I was knocking on doors of those who did not respond. And I, it was just an incredible uh, education for me as to uh, why folks were not signing up. They were afraid that the government was going to do something to them. Um, and we were out there plugging along, trying to catch those who fell through the crack. And uh, Mayor, thanks for bringing that up. I'm glad about that. The other, other thing we passed last night was an ordinance for the folks in First Creek Basin to have a uh, sort of a clearinghouse of, of, of sorts for flooding priorities um, issues. That's sort of a very short-term uh, definition of it, but it provides those in that uh, flood basin to help prioritize um, projects to alleviate flooding issues for them. So it's, I can't do Council Member Waring's um, public service uh, committee that I, I, I served with them on as well. So a lot of attention, not enough, but a lot of attention is directed to West Ash and we got a lot more work to be, to be done on that. Thanks, man, for bringing those points up. Really do appreciate, appreciate Thank you all for your service. I appreciate it. I have a question for you, Mr. Mayor and Ms. Peters. Mayor Tecklenburg, what was the person's, the hundred year old person's name that you all named the courtroom after? I didn't hear the name. Uh, Judge Richard E. Fields. Judge Fields. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Peters, you mentioned earlier, I just wanted to get some clarification on the property on Juniper Street that would be 11 townhomes. Hmm? Is that a vacant lot now, or is it an existing building that will be torn down or something? Uh, it is a va it's vacant. Um, it's two parcels. One had a house on there that was torn down, but the other po the the portion next to it was uh, vacant. So now they're just vacant land there now. Okay, perfect. Thank you. 
Yes, sir, Mr. Wearing. 55 Juniper Street, if you want to drive by. 55? 15, 55 Juniper okay. Street. Okay. One. Let, let, let me touch bases on what Ms. Peters just said. That Those 11 townhouses, prior to that, it was going to be eight townhomes that were going to be built. Because City Council changed an ordinance that allowed smaller lots for uh, only for affordable housing, only for the de development of affordable housing. On that same parcel that was going to allow eight units, now 11 units can be built. So that land cost that the city initially paid was going to be divided across eight affordable units. Now that land cost will be, or acquisition cost will be divided across 11 units, which will hopefully bring down the cost of developing those houses. But for the change in that ordinance that allowed smaller lots um, and um, compromises on setback and sideline requirements, that same track of land would not have been able to accommodate the now 11 units. So um, the policies are changing and affordable housing is becoming uh, hopefully a little bit more affordable. Thanks, Mr. Right. Chairman. Thank you, thanks for getting that. Okay, any other comments, questions, um, before I turn it back over to Eric, because Eric, I think you're going to be the, um, the gatekeeper of public comment now. Uh, I, I will after our one last agenda item. Oh, okay. Oh, well, sorry, I'm sorry. My pen was covering that item number six. That's Can you going to give us a review of the um, city planning listening overview? Yes. Yes, I am. All right. So, um, and, and there were uh, a few of the commission members that were um, – on our uh, listening session, uh, which you'll see in, in a moment or two when I pull up some pictures. So uh, in, uh, just to, to brief you, so the city has in, uh, launched into our uh, comprehensive plan overhaul. It's required every 10 years by the state. Uh, and we are um, retitling our comprehensive plan, the city plan. Uh, if you ever hear anyone uh, talking about Century 5, that's what it was called, we're gonna call it the city plan because it's much more understandable uh, to, to refer to it as that title. Um, so uh, West Ashley listening sessions, which were uh, reservation or registration for the public to uh, talk general concerns they have for West Ashley were held on September 1st, 2020, last Tuesday. Uh, there was one session at 9 a.m., one session at 6 p.m. They're facilitated by City of Charleston uh, employees as well as our community engagement consultants, which came from uh, about three, uh, it, it's a group of um, three different uh, companies that came together to help us uh, reach out to our community. So far, West Ashley has had the largest listening session of any of the groups that we've met with. Uh, each meeting, there was approximately 50 people that registered and about 36 uh, attended for the AM and 32 for the PM, which is a pretty good turnout. Um, it was broken down as partici participants learned about the comprehensive plan elements and the role in city government that the comprehensive plan has. Uh, we then broke them out into groups of two to four people for discussion questions. The questions were, uh, what do you like about your community? What makes your community special? Question two, the mission of the planning department is to improve quality of life for all people in Charleston. The plans we implement primarily affect the physical environment of our communities. When you, when you think of quality of life, what do you think of? In your experience, what is most important for the quality of life, especially uh, aspects of the uh, physical environment? We phrase it that way because the comprehensive plan mainly deals with uh, impacts on the physical environment. Number three, the plan will inform changes to the city over the next 10 years. What kind of changes, again, especially the physical environment, would most improve the quality of life for people in your community? And so uh, I, I went through uh, all the different responses that were tallied in and just kind of, um, this is gonna be a, a very high level summary of what was said. So um, the, the Greenway bikeway is the biggest asset for West Ashley was pretty well uh, a consensus. The majority of the participants commented on how they enjoyed being able to use the linear parks 
not just for recreation, but also access services such as groceries. They also comment on how West Ashley had everything they could want within a convenient drive or biking distance. Residents also make comments about choosing West Ashley because of the diversity found in the neighborhoods, the sense of belonging in their neighborhoods, and the natural resources that are within reach, such as uh, beaches, waterfronts, um, things of that nature. The convenience of location was a highlight by many people as being located close to employment centers in downtown Charleston, downtown Charleston, North Charleston, and Mount Pleasant. One respondent who lives in Mount Pleasant, but their office is located in West Ashley, like the community that is around their um, office, uh, as well as how easy it is to access all parts of the city from that office location. For question two, uh, regarding quality of life and what they, they feel that means. Participants responded by saying access to green spaces, ease of travel, both vehicular and bike ped, and affordability for housing are important to their quality of life. They also responded that noise and safety as it related to traffic is an issue they feel is at increasingly odds with West Ashley's neighborhood feel. With the appreciate, appreciation of the greenway, there's a desire to see more trails and separate pathways for bicycles to move around West Ashley. The maintenance of existing sidewalks and trails was touched on by some groups with a desire to see vegetation maintained and controlled uniformly along the corridors. In terms of what uh, changes they would like to see over the next 10 years, when asked, uh, they, uh, a lot of them said more sidewalks, more bicycle connections, uh, especially for Outer West Ashley, a strong request uh, to have more connectivity in Outer West Ashley with stores and commercial locations being connected to neighborhood by trail systems. The crossing points along highways was also brought up as a barrier to those who live away from the Greenway bikeway from being able to fully utilize them. In addition to acknowledging and requesting that there needs to, the need for affordable housing to be addressed, there was also discussion in some groups for affordable commercial spaces with a focus point on startups or even corner stores to be allowed into some neighborhoods. Stormwater concerns were raised ranging from requesting existing ditches be better maintained and managed to also uh, repurposing existing impervious surfaces uh, to be better drained. So that is the uh, overview of what was discussed recently at the City Comprehensive Plan. We have additional input meetings coming up uh, for housing, uh, which Mr. Morgan touched on, that we have a housing consultant doing some very deep dives on that. There is also an open listening session coming up uh, and all of that can be, all the information that you need for that one is found at uh, charlestoncityplan.com. It's all one word. And uh, when you come go to the website, you'll see that there's a, a information page right at the front. We have this lovely video that was done for us for, uh, regarding the comprehensive plan. In addition, uh, you, this is the uh, link in order to register for different groups. We also have lead your own listening sessions where um, you can actually download a packet to uh, lead your own uh, uh, input session with either your neighborhood group or with uh, a congregation or coworkers, uh, whatever type of group you'd like, and then a way to submit it back to us. Um, and then uh, the explore data is um, something very interesting where we, we compiled a lot of uh, information that the city kind of inherently has uh, in our data banks in a way for uh, kind of getting everyone onto the same page for the different issues in the, in the city regarding affordability, housing, uh, water issues, everything that we're focusing on um, to really uh, get our plan in order. That is going to wrap that up unless there is any questions for me regarding the plan. I listened into the um, afternoon session um, that we had and I was very much impressed with those who participated and um, the comments and that Eric will rather quickly with you were very consistent with what we heard from our charrettes um, and other listening sessions we had from when we were doing the plan with, with Ashley. So a lot of consistency um, and we want to get more people involved in participating in this. As said, 
this sort of sets the roadmap for the city for the next um, for the next decade. Um, please tell your friends and neighbors uh, to log on to the listening sessions. Input is very important on all of that. It's very critical to how we um, we plan. It's like just like the census is just got to be counted. Just, and your voice being counted is so important with all of this. All right, Eric. So would give us a rundown on the public comment period. Is, is are the people signed up to talk or? Uh, so um, uh, when last I looked about five minutes ago, no one had signed up to talk. Uh, I do have one email and uh, one gentleman who uh, called in to me and left a message. Okay, uh, we'll share that I with will, us? I will go ahead and share those. Uh, so I will read the email first. Uh, this one is from Peggy Bone, Boney. Um, I'd like to ask the West Ashley Commission to ask the police to step up the enforcement of the noise ordinance in West Ashley. Very loud motorcycles and cars are traveling up and down St. Andrews Boulevard, making it hard to enjoy our yards. There are signs downtown stated that the ordinance will be enforced. Could we get the same thing in West Ashley? In addition, there have been homeless people living under the Ashley River Bridge overpass in downtown and on the island across from Burtle Bank Park for some time. The same man has been begging on Wesley Drive and a different one at the end of I-526 for months. This is illegal in Charleston, but apparently there is no enforcement or they would not continue to do it almost every day. The law needs to be enforced and someone needs to get help for these people to get them into some housing. Then there have been, a, uh, I've noticed two folks who have been hiding out underneath the, uh, the North Bridge, but we did get uh, the police and our um, I think Ms. Johnson got involved in helping find that fail and getting them relocated to the appropriate assistance that he needed. Okay, and then a right. phone call. And then the phone call is from James Potter. Uh, he says, how does the commission operate knowing that there is no budget for Church Creek drainage basin, not one penny? If focus is only gonna be on Citadel Mall, he feels that the commission should be disbanded. There are bigger issues to tackle in the area. Start by getting people's homes to stop flooding. Okay. All right. All right. Any other business that we need to take up for um, for this? And Eric, do we have a date for our next meeting? Uh, we have a tentative date. Um, unfortunately, uh, Richard. Um, uh, not Davis, because he's on this call. Uh, Turner, there we go, Richard Turner with the county is on vacation, so I've not been able to get in touch with him. Um, we're hoping to uh, uh, be able to coordinate a meeting for October um, that would showcase uh, what's uh, going to occur at the Sumar Street parcel regarding the uh, city investment, or at least an outline of what we're hoping to get on there. Um, as negotiations have continued with the development partner. Uh, in addition, the county is coming close to um, uh, polishing off their uh, new ideas for how to aid in the traffic calming along Sam Rittenberg and Old Town Road. Um, Councilman Moody, do you have anything to comment on that one? Um, I, I've seen the plans uh, and it, it uh, in my opinion, it meets the uh, the goals that um, the community laid out to us in the first and second rounds that, that they you know, pretty resoundingly rejected. Um, it, it hits the intersections very heavily. There's a lot of sidewalks. Um, and so uh, I, think it, I, think it, I think the public will be pleased with it. Um, I know Richard was supposed to be bringing it, uh, Eric, to you guys uh, and your, your shop. Uh, I trust maybe you've seen that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if the leadership of the city has, but if they haven't, it'll, it'll probably be to them shortly. And, and Councilman Moody, thank you for your work on that and um, your assistance has been a, a, a tremendous help and coordination between the city and the county is so critical for this. Um, and we, we've had a preview of it as well. I'm extremely excited about what's proposed um, we, have a, we have a new fancy name for it, um, I think, don't we? It's called the Old Town. Yeah, Old it, was named, it, it was named West Ashley something, and I, I said you need to be a little more specific than that. Um, so well, I think we narrowed it down to Old Town. But 
you know, Eric, I can give a 10 second overview. It's really the intersections. Um, uh, Donahue intersection there at Old Town is straightened out. Dickens gets some work. Uh, Amberley on the Sam Rittenberg side, there, there looks to be a stoplight there. There's a, a very high volume of wrecks there. Um, the intersection at uh, Orange Grove uh, in Sam Rittenberg gets a lot of work. And we continue to hear from people, just put a light at T-Bones. Well, <laughs> we've asked. <laughs> we've asked for 10 years and DOT says no. So uh, it's not going to happen. DOT is uh, very particular about um, what what you pay to do to their roads. But, but it does have a lot of the things we have been clamoring about and goes back to what Eric presented about connectivity, connectivity, connectivity. And you can see a lot of connectivity uh, with that. It's going to make the streets uh, more attractive. Uh, Sumar is, uh, falls into that category as well. So uh, hopefully we'll give you a, a good preview of all of that in October. Um, that's going to uh, take up a good part of our meeting in, in October when we set that, that date. Um, so thank you all for, for that. Um, is there any other business that we need to bring up at this point? All right. Yes, sir, Mr. Waring. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I, I still think we need to come up with a list that we report uh, out on monthly, in particular unsightly areas, in particular some of these places that are closed and the grass just grows up uh, in and around the areas. It makes West Ashley look less than it can be. And um, you know, I may mention that, I believe, at the last meeting, but I think that should be part of the, um, um, the, the updates that we give. Um, I mean, I know as council people, you and I, and certainly uh, Councilman Moody would do our part, but we got more eyes and ears on this committee than certainly the three of us have. So I don't know whether we report that in with a picture to Eric to be reported out to us. It certainly would, would make all of us a little bit better at what we do and clean West Ashley up at the same time, because even though you're closed, you still got to cut your grass. So um, I, I ran into one of my neighbors this morning brought that to my attention and um, she commented about how we took so much more pride in taking care of our, 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 our own property and what we need to do to, to address those unsightly areas. And it's not just residential, it's a lot of commercial um, unsightly areas as well. So you right. did bring it back up and I'm glad you mentioned it again. Um, so if we can formulate a plan on how to address that a little bit more uh, orderly and, and we can Bring those attention to, to Eric by email. That's one way of, of doing it. Um, we can also bring in Dan Ruscio and see if he can give us a report on, on some of that. Uh, that falls right into his uh, livability corner. Yeah, I, we need we need to get another Ruscio, um, Councilman Moody on the county side. So <laughs> yeah, really, we got divided government here, so Ruscio yeah. can't do it all. So well, yeah. we can, we need to clone him is what we need to do, honestly. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Waring, uh, I agree. Whatever you guys are paying Riccio, it's not enough. But we do have a we do have a group. Uh, Walt Smalls in our general services area, uh, and in the planning and zoning, they've got a group of uh, of code enforcement people that are that are, are very responsive. Uh, they will they will get out quickly. Uh, okay. I think it's pretty. I think the enforcement's fairly uniform. They'll give the the owner you know seven to ten days to cure, uh, and they'll be right back out after them. If they're not, they'll start writing tickets. So they they. They're pretty aggressive about it. All right, one, one last other victory. I've, I've brought this up before too, but when you come back West Ashley on the North Bridge <clears throat> and you got that wooded area, um, uh, Councilman Shade, uh, in between Sam Rittenberg and Sandhurst, it's a naturally um, grown area. We just need to clean it out and put some, I'm not saying cut trees down. I know the neighbors would like to have that buffer, but clean it out. Buffer. Yeah, that's right. Clean it out and just put some straw and maybe some bedding plants. Even if you just leave the bedding plants out and just put put straw and mulch or whatever. As you go around and past the old Blue Cross and Blue Shield building um, and, and pass, uh, you know, the shopping center on the left there, uh, it used to be, I still want to call it Ashley Plaza right, Mall. Plaza. Yeah. But, but it's time to show our age. I know, but all those trees on the right-hand side as you head it west, um, there's a natural buffer that can be cleaned and just beautified with mulch. Um, 
over in Mount Pleasant, when they, when they beautified 17 bypass, they had to buy rights away to be able to do that. They had to buy property to put some of the nice landscape and they have bordering uh, what used to be 17, you know, just Johnny Dodge, but you know, 17 bypass. We actually own it from a standpoint of the county or the city doesn't even have to go out there and buy it. All we have to do is clean it up and make it prettier. So um, trim it up, uh, make it neat, and I'm going to tell you, that's an easy victory for us. And it really doesn't cost a whole lot. So uh, those two things, uh, let's all work together and get them done. And you won't have to hear me say it again. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, like a, that's like a preacher's comments. I won't keep you long. <laughs> all right, everybody. I think we're going to meet again in October. We've got some really um, exciting things coming along. We uh, hopefully get an update from Richard and Ginger on more stuff going on at the Epic Center, uh, Sumar Street, um, the Old Town Improvement Road, uh, some work going on with flood mitigation in, in Church Creek Basin. We, we are addressing those issues. So uh, I don't know if we can tackle all of them in October, but uh, so I, we, we try to spread this out so we weren't meeting every month. But the good news is that we have a lot of things on our plate uh, that, that we want to address, and, and um, we will come back with a um, the unsightly, the livability and code enforcement. Maybe we can coordinate with the city and county folks and give us an update on how we can improve on on that. And um, I made a note, Councilman, we're wearing about the frontage roads on those two spots. I've talked to Jason about it before. I'll follow up with them uh, again. So I stay would, tuned. Yes, this man is Hamilton. I would like to. Um reiterate one more time too about code enforcement within the neighborhoods. Um, there is still an issue with um, landlords not um, informing their tenants about the need to mow the lawn on a regular basis and also removal of the garbage and recycle containers from the um, side and put them back at the appropriate time. Uh, I don't know whether we don't have enough code enforcement individuals on staff to handle this, but um, there's a definite need, and we've been saying this for a number of years now, that we need, and that will add to the beautification of the area. You have the individual homeowners who are doing their part, but then you have, and, and I don't like picking on landlords, but when you, you can tell the difference between who lives in a location um, by the way the property is being maintained. We will, uh, I think we're definitely going to have code enforcement folks, livability folks here in, in October. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? No. Oh. All right, folks, have a great uh uh, rest of the month of, of September. Stay safe. I hope the weather gets a little bit more comfortable for us. Um, maybe we'll watch some football games. Maybe not. God will only know how that pans out. Uh, but thank you all, all for your service uh, to our community and your love for West Ashley. Um, and we'll see you in October. Thank you all. You're welcome. Bye-bye.